Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, this is the study I wanted to do in between. Uh, see if I can get it out. Um, yeah, uh, for Romans, Romans chapter 7 and 8, where we're doing, can a Christian be carnally minded? Can a Christian be carnally minded? So, I wanted to do a study in between, and it's going to be more of a visual study. I'm going to try to uh, quote some scriptures, and then some from memory, and just talk to you and show you, in Christ Jesus, what does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? We're going to talk about the Godhead, we're going to talk about a person's state, lost and saved, and we're going to talk about the Trinity. Okay, Why is it so important? Um, 1 Corinthians, the whole point of this, let's see if I can find it. 1 Corinthians 11, we'll read it here in a bit, but it talks about preaching another Jesus. Preaching another, getting people to receive another spirit. Getting people to accept another gospel. Okay. What's this big push about you can be a carnal Christian, you can be a carnal Christian, you can just live in wicked, wicked sin, and then claim I'm a Christian, I'm saved. I get people hitting me up with that. I was a false convert. That's how I was for so many years. I'm a Christian, and I can live however I want to live. It was all about the flesh. It wasn't about Jesus Christ. So, we're going to start with the first part, the Godhead. Now, I'm getting used to this where the camera's angle and everything, so everything's good. So, we're going to have God, the... Father. Forgive me my handwriting, my handwriting is not the best. Then we're going to have um, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is, if you'll let me, I need space between here. Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the, the in singular, holy, capital S, Spirit. So, we have God the Father, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, capital L Lord, capital G God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, capital S, Spirit, as we find in the Bible when we did our Romans chapter 8 and chapter 7 studies. Okay. So, this is the Godhead. You've got the soul, the body. I'll go ahead and write this out for the lost versus saved. We have the soul, we have the body, and we have the lowercase s, spirit. Okay. We are made in the likeness of God. Okay, people get on to because I did that video Trinity Triplets way back when. Image, someday we might do a word study on it, but image is something physical that you can see. Whether you're picturing it in your head, you're picturing something physical that you can see in your head, your mind, imagination, or whatever, and it's something that's physically in front of you. Image is talking about the body. Who's the image of the invisible God? Jesus Christ. Okay. When the Bible in Genesis says God made man in his image, I believe it's talking about Adam. In his likeness made he them, male and, uh, man and woman created he them. There's two distinctions between likeness and image. We're made in the likeness of God. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Uh, we're made in the likeness of God. I put this wrong. I was going off how I put it up there for the Godhead. I put it up there for the Godhead a little bit differently for a reason, but we want body, soul, spirit for this study. So, we're made in the likeness of God. Now, I want to talk about the Godhead and what happened on the cross, because it's so important. When you have God the Father, the Godhead teaches that God the Father is Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is God the Father. They're connected. Okay, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Okay, uh, talking to Philip when he asked, show us the Father, have, have thou been so long time with me, Philip, have thou, has, hath thou not known me? 
He's actually showing us the Father, and Jesus is saying, you haven't known me? In other words, I'm the Father. He claimed to be, I am, a title for God the Father. Jesus said, I, before Abraham was, I am. Okay? Jesus said, I will be with you. And then he talks about sending the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to be with you. Uh, talking about the ladies, the hidden man of the heart, Jesus Christ is in you. And you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Okay? They're connected. That's why I drew those lines. This is the Godhead, and it's not an image of the Godhead. I'm writing down, before the people start attacking me, what, what's happening on the cross, what the Godhead is. You have God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Okay. We'll get to the Trinity here in a second. But let's discuss what happened on the cross, because it plays a big part of what happens here. When you get saved, the Gospel plays a big part. Right. So, first let's talk about Jesus' physical body. What happened on the cross? Why was his physical body important? Right. Romans 8.2 For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. We are in sinful flesh. Okay? And we'll talk about this here in a second. Jesus came in likeness of sinful flesh. He came in a corruptible body. He was tempted. Uh, Satan went out and tempted him. He fasted for 40 days and Satan took him up there and tempted him. And we're going to talk about how Satan tempted him and how Satan is still using that today to get people to worship him. Okay? The Trinity. So, this is the three... The Godhead died on the cross. I've talked about studies. I've had brothers in Christ do studies on it. The Godhead died on the cross. Okay? The Bible talks about feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. So what's happening on the cross? Okay. Matthew 27, 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is that the only place it has? No, Mark 15, 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, 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 lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Remember, it's God's blood that was shed on Calvary. God, the body, Jesus Christ, died on Calvary. Death, burial, and resurrection. I'm getting ahead of myself. What happened? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God the Father cannot be connected to sin. God cannot be connected to sin. This is very important. Jesus became sin who knew no sin. Okay? As we just read there, in the sin, likeness of sinful flesh, he can, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Now, what happens next? Mark 15, 37. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Mark 15, 39. And when the centurion which stood over, over against him saw that he cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. Here we see it again, gave up the ghost. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having thus, said thus, he gave up the ghost. John 19.30 When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. I know it's hard for some people. It is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. So what happened? He gave up the ghost. What happened after he gave up the ghost? He died. What did they do with his body? They buried it. Now, I'm not erasing this saying he disappeared. I'm just doing this for a reason. So, stick with me. 
Okay? They buried it. His body's in the, in the ground. Or it's in the tomb. Sorry, not in the ground, but the tomb's in the ground. Um, it's in the tomb. Okay? Now, I uh, say it is finished. Okay? Remember we read the verse where it talks about how the death of Jesus Christ is what reconciles us to God. And we talked about why his resurrection, in the past study, why his resurrection proved that he is God completely and fully. Okay. So Moses, you want to go back to the Old Testament, read the story about Moses. He hit the rock once. Jesus is the rock. And when he went to hit the rock, he was supposed to speak to the rock the second time and he hit it. And he got in big trouble and punished for hitting the rock twice. So what I meant by people can't seem to handle this, these post-trib and mid-trib people that reject the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ can't handle that. I had someone in the comments section, he's talking about how we might be able, we might go into the time of Jacob's trouble. I mean, it, it could be possible. And I told him, we don't need further purification, okay? God's not going to pour his wrath out on his body again. And then the guy came back and said, well, he did it once. He might do it again. And I was like, really? <laughs> so I quoted in this verse and said, it is finished. He doesn't need, he's not going to pour wrath on his body twice. What happened with Moses? Okay? And the person came back and said, well, it depends on what it is. And I'm just like, it's like you facepalm, you know, behind the computer desk. It's like, these people are desperate. They're really desperate. It is finished. Okay? The death and burial of Jesus Christ reconciled us to God, those who are truly saved. Why do we have to believe the third day he rose again? Okay, what happened? Let's talk about what happened. Acts 2.24, three days later, 2.24. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. God the Father raised Jesus Christ up, proving that he is God fully and completely. Death has no power over him. You have to believe that Jesus is God, and it was his, God's blood that shed on Calvary. His death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, that's the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection, and how he died. Okay. Uh, Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Mm -hmm. Acts 10, 40. I just grabbed a few. There was a lot for God raising him up from the dead. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Okay? God the Father raised Jesus Christ up from the dead. Let's keep going. Jesus, let's talk about uh, the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Quickened by the Spirit. Okay. And the next verse there says, By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. People said he burned in hell. He went and burned in hell. No. He went down to Abraham's bosom and preached to the Old Testament saints. Okay. You want to learn about that? Um, Lazarus and the rich man. When Jesus is telling the story about Lazarus and the rich man, Abraham's bosom is across from hell. It's both in the earth. Okay? And there's a huge chasm between the two. Okay? And Abraham's bosom is not the same as hell. Okay? People in Abraham's bosom wasn't burning. Okay? It was a waiting place. Because they, they still needed the death of Jesus Christ. His blood, the Old Testament animal sacrifice, only covered their sins. It didn't take them away. It still required Jesus' death on the cross to take their sins away. Salvation wasn't the same all across the board. I'm not teaching that. But I am teaching what the scripture said. Jesus went down and preached. Um, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. That his blood was shed. His blood can wash their sins away. So they all can go to heaven. Talks about how the dead in Christ raised on the third day. People were going around out of the grave. So, the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Let's keep going here. John 2, 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? 
Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, which is what happened on the cross. Remember, your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. And in three days I will raise it up. Then Jesus, or then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou reel it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Okay? When therefore he was risen from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had spoken. Jesus The Lord Jesus Christ raised himself from the dead. Now we talked about this in another study. If I stopped here, it would be like I'm repeating myself. Um, and, but you get to see it more visual as it's being written out. But what's important is these connections. Okay, Jesus, God the Father, when Jesus became sin, who knew no sin, could not be connected to sin. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? When Jesus died, the Holy Spirit left. That's what happens when you die. Now, um, let's talk, we're going to get to this here in a second, but let's go down and talk about the Trinity. Okay? Where we have, you have their thing of God, I hate doing that actually, because God the Father is truth. It is. But when you do the Trinity, they turn it into lowercase g God. So I gotta keep remembering to put in lowercase you God the Father. Okay? Then they teach that there's God the Son. Okay? Hopefully you can read, my handwriting's not the best. The Trinity also teaches that there is Lowercase g, God, the Holy Spirit. Once again, capital S spirits for the real Holy Spirit. And it's just a habit of always putting uh, capitals. But this isn't truth. We proved that in many studies. This is what the Trinity teaches. So, let's see if you guys can see. What's the difference between this line and that line? What's the difference? The Trinity teaches that it's God in three persons, separate persons. There's no connection. There's no connection. The true Godhead, that's, they're connected. God the Father, the soul, is connected to the body, Jesus Christ, which is connected to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. They are one. These three are one. In Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. There's no connection down here. They say God the Father is not God the Son. God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit. What, what are we really seeing down here? What we're really seeing down here Hopefully there's still some room, is we've got okay. let's see, Revelation 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Okay. We've got the dragon, also known as also known as. Said my hand is not this. Also known as Satan. And out of the mouth of the beast, okay, we see over here we got the beast. Also known as the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. That is what that really is. And they can't stand that, the Trinity people. That's not what we believe. Some of them don't. Some of them don't. They believe this up here, but they're so prideful, they will not get rid of this stuff on, down here. Capital T Trinity is not in the Bible. God in three persons is not in the Bible. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is not in the Bible. So let's keep reading there. And out of the mouth of the false prophet,
false prophet. Three separate persons. A person has to have a body, a soul, and you can only call someone a person if they're living. It's referred to a man, woman, or child. Body, soul, and spirit. To say these are three separate persons, they have to have a body, soul, and spirit of their own. Body, soul, spirit of their own. The false prophet comes. He's got a body, soul, spirit. The Antichrist has a body, soul, and spirit. And you have Satan. He um, used to be a uh, cherubim, I think it was. Uh, and he, he lost his state as far as to when he turned against God, but he hasn't fallen yet. He's got a body, he's got a soul, and he's alive, isn't he? <laughs> so, body, soul, and spirit, body, soul, and spirit, body, soul, and spirit, that's what they believe. That's what's going on here. Now, 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Would to God you could bear with me. I, I've got ahead. I'm going to stop for a second. Let's go to this part right here. This is us. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. Let's talk about the lost state. Okay? We talked about it where the Old Testament, the saints, the reason the Old Testament saints had to go outside when they touched something filthy, something dirty, or did something bad, they had to get sacrifices, but when their physical body had sickness, or they touched a dead corpse, something that was unclean, they had to go outside the camp, clean themselves, and stay outside the camp for so many days. Okay? Why is that? Because the body and the soul are connected. What's done? The sinful flesh, the sinful acts, connected to the body and taint the soul. That is the state of a lost person when it comes to these two. Okay? Now, why isn't there a line over here? Because the Bible says you're dead in trespasses and sin. Okay? You're spiritually dead. There is no line here. You're spiritually dead. Yes, the spirit's in the body keeping it alive. But for the study, you're spiritually dead. The Bible teaches that. Now, when you get saved, what happens? You come to God and you repent. For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. You come to God and you have sorrow for this state right here. For your sins. Having godly sorrow for sinning against God. When God looks at your soul, what does he see when you're lost? The body. All this sin. You're sorry for this state. It's godly sorrow. But that verse we just pre, uh, the verse that we just read, uh, quote, I quoted, says the sorrows of the world work at death. False converts. They want to keep this. They have no problem with this. They want to be saved and go to heaven, but they have no problem with this. Why? Because the sorrows of the world, the way of the world is sin. They're, 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 they don't want to give it up. And what is the sorrows of the world worth it? Death. But we're talking about salvation first. Okay. You gotta be sorry for this statement. Or for this state that you're in. You're spiritually dead. We read in Romans 7 and 8 that um, you're carnally minded, spirit's dead, carnally minded, and you walk after the flesh. The flesh is in charge, it's in control. Okay? And you're on your way to hell. Because of this state right here, you have godly sorrow, because sin can't be connected to God. And the punishment is hell, everlasting fire. We talked about it down here. Where the, the false prophet's going to go, the beast, the dragon. I'm going to go ahead and read it again, because I can't remember if we read it. So I'm going to read it again. Uh -huh. No, I don't think we read it. What's going to happen to these guys? I'm getting ahead of myself. I just realized there's a chapter. Please forgive me. Bear with me. It's new to me. We're going to get to that. But we're going to find out where these people go. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, we're going to read here in a second. It talks about these guys down here and bearing with them. If this is who you want to be with, connected to, you're going to wind up in hell and then tossed in the lake of fire. But this is your lost state. Okay? You have to have repentance, godly sorrow. 
then you have to believe what Jesus did, exactly what we talked about. Not necessarily the Godhead. Godhead, you'll, God will show you more after salvation. But you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. He became sin who knew no sin. He paid for the sins of the world. The blood that was shed on the cross was God's blood. He paid the price that every person on this planet that ever lived should have, played, should have paid. Okay. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Death, burial, and resurrection, proving that He is God. Then what do you do? You confess both in prayer. This all happens in the heart. People say, well, God doesn't hear the prayers of the lost people. That comes after salvation. I proved that King David was saying that in Psalms, if I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. You're coming to Him broken, throwing your iniquities at the foot of the cross. That's confessing that you're, you understand your state, and you have godly sorrow for it, and that you believe in what Jesus Christ did for you. Then you say, Lord, save me. What happens when God saves you? Remember the circumcision made without hands. This is the old man. This, the connection, I'm sorry, the connection is the old man. The connection is the old husband. We'll talk about it in a second. Now that the old husband is dead, you're free to be married to the new husband. The Bible talks about he that has he quick he that was dead and trespasses sin, talking about quickening your body. What happens? You're no longer spiritually dead. This is salvation. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? The soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. Your spirit's now alive. We talked about in Romans 7 and 8. You are now spiritually minded. You're no longer carnally minded because your spirit's dead. You are spiritually minded. Capital S, spiritually minded because your spirit's alive. And you walk after the spirit. This is severed. Your body is no longer in charge. You don't walk after the flesh. You're not carnally minded. You're spiritually minded. See the connections. And you walk after the spirit. This is what it means to be in Christ Jesus. You know that, what are we called? The body of Christ? Because you're in Christ Jesus? Another thing I thought was pretty interesting was, you read the verse about how we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heavenly places, our soul is in heaven, and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our soul's here in our bodies, but it's also in heaven. Why? Because you're in Christ. Christ Jesus. Where's Jesus right now in heaven? found that pretty interesting. This is the state of someone who is saved. They have sorrow for this. They don't want to live like this. They don't want their body being in charge anymore. They turn to Jesus. Jesus comes in. The soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes in. You know, Jesus in you, the Holy Spirit in you. God the Father in you. There's a lot of passages in there that we've talked about. And you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. The body of Christ. This is the state. And because of this state, you want Jesus to take over. That's what it means by walking after the Spirit. When you walk after the Spirit, you're saying, God, take over. My life is a mess. When you first get saved, you're going to have a lot of carnal things in your life. Because the whole point of all these studies is people keep saying you can be a carnal Christian. You cannot be carnally minded and be saved. Your life can't be carnal, as we're learning, with this connection. Your life cannot be carnal. There's no such thing as a carnal Christian when it comes to being carnally minded and walking after the flesh. You're going to have a lot of carnal things in your life. I did. God had a lot of work to do with me, and sometimes I struggled with them. And He had to work hard on me. Kind of smack me around a little bit, you know. I mean, how many of us has been there, brothers and sisters in Christ, where God was really working and we feel like I'm the chiefest of sinners, like Paul said, because my life was so messed up when I first got saved. But it was God, Jesus Christ, 
who cleaned my life up. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God gave us his word, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Right? Who opens the word to us? The Holy Spirit. You've got to have that connection. The Holy Spirit opens the word of God to you. Okay? Now, this, like I said, is saved. What's going on in 1 and 2 Corinthians? Okay. Let's go back to the lost state. Spiritually dead, body connected to the soul. 1 Corinthians 11.1 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Remember we talked about this connection between body and soul. That's the old husband. This is the old man. You still have the body, but the connection, the fact that your soul is connected to your body, that's the state of the old man. That's the old husband. This is what this is talking about. Jealousy over godly jealousy, for I espouse you to one husband. These people are professing to be saved. They're supposed to have the connection right here. But they still have the connection there. Okay. Why is that? Why is the connection still here? Why does it look like the lost state? First, let's continue. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve, Satan, through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted by, from the simplicity that is in Christ. Through his subtlety, as we see down there, the simplicity that's in Christ. How do we know this? For if he that cometh preach another Jesus, which we have not preached, whom we have not preached, or if you received another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, false prophet comes and preaches another gospel, gets people to believe in the Antichrist, preach another gospel, or another gospel which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now where are these people going to end up? The Trinity. The true pagan trinity. Where are they going to end up? It says you might well bear with them. Revelation 16, 13, we talked about that, showing why I wrote down false prophet, beast, um, the dragon. So you have the false prophet, the beast, and the dragon. So what's going to happen to them? Revelation 19, 20. Revelation 19, 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he received them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that, that he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. See, the prophets deceived him. Another gospel. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Where did these two end up? You might, well, if you're worshipping this down here, where are you going to end up? Where did these two end up? The lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Revelation 20.10. We haven't forgot about him over there. Satan, the dragon. Where does he end up? And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's Revelation 20.10. He gets tossed into the lake of fire. And notice, after a thousand years of Jesus reigning on the earth, and then Satan being let loose for a while, little while, and then defeated again, he goes down there, gets tossed down in there, these two are still there. It's everlasting. This verse right here totally proves that it's not annihilation, death isn't the grave, like hell's not the grave, you're not just poof, you just cease to exist. You go to hell, you're going to burn for all eternity. Tossed into the lake of fire, death and hell were cast in the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever is not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. When we show the saved state, your name's in the book of life. This lost state, your name's not in the book of life. You're on your way to hell. Okay. So, that's where these three are going to end up. Now we're going back to 1 Corinthians 11.1. Remember it says you might well bear with them. What's going on with these false converts, these people that want to be Christians? They have worldly sorrow. They love this connection. They love being carnally minded and walking after the flesh. The world's way is sin. 
Um, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father, through Jesus Christ, there's no connection there. It's not in him. Um, the adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity against God? Whosoever shall be a friend of the world, they want this connection, friend of the world, is the enemy of God. No connection here. Worldly sorrow. So what do they do? Well, we want to go to heaven, we want to be Christians, but we don't want to give this up. We love our sin. We love our soul being connected to our body. So what do they do? Well, we're going to believe in another Jesus. Okay? We're going to receive another spirit. So what happens? The Antichrist, I'm drawing the line here because it's the Antichrist, they have the Antichrist spirit in them. Their spirit, they're spiritually dead, and they have the Antichrist spirit. Where are they going to end up? If you believe in this trinity, where are you going to end up? I'm talking about people who truly believe this. They will not let go of it. You talk to people, I don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. He's the soul. I believe Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ is the body. But they'll say God the Son, but they believe he's the body. They'll say God the Holy Spirit, but they believe it's just the spirit, and these three are one. You talk to them, they believe in the Godhead, but because of their pride, and they were, a brother said in Christ, uh, through philosophy, they've been spoiled through philosophy. He reminded me of that verse. Um, they're spoiled through philosophy. They won't give it up. They won't give up the Trinity terms. But you come across people that truly believe in the Trinity. They don't believe God the Father is connected to Jesus Christ. They're not one. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. They don't believe they're one. They believe this down here. Where are they going to wind up? Hell. What's going on in First and Second Corinthians? We'll get to the first chapter, but I'll give you a little heads up on it. It talks about glorifying the flesh. These people, whether you reject Jesus Christ outright or you want to believe in your false Jesus Christ, it's all about glorifying their flesh. It's not about glorifying God. When you're truly saved, you have the connection here. Soul, uh, spirit becomes quickened, and it's all about Jesus Christ, glorifying Jesus Christ. You go from 100% about the flesh to 100% about Jesus Christ. It's all about glorifying Jesus Christ. This lost state, believing in a false Jesus Christ, is all about so they can try to justify glorifying the flesh. Ultimately, that's what's going on in First and Second Corinthians. And as we go through, we're going to see that they have all these kind of problems. Why? Because they have false converts coming in. You have someone coming in, false, not actually the false prophet, but the ministers of Satan. You know, Satan is transformed into an angel of light. For, it's no, for no marvel that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. You have false prophets, not the false prophet in the Revelation, but false prophets coming in preaching another gospel, another Jesus, and getting them to receive an antichrist spirit. That's what's going on in First and Second Corinthians. And as you go through and you learn about the carnal, 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 it's Paul saying, this. some of you are in this state. Some of you are trying to glorify your bodies. It's all about glorifying your body. You guys need to be, you're in this state, but that's not the state you need to be in. He comes by and that's why he re-preaches re -preaches the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. through 4. He preached it in Romans. But he had to re-preach the gospel to him. Why did he have to re-preach the gospel to people that are already saved? Why? Because some of them weren't saved. They didn't have this state right here. They were still trying to glorify their body. It was all about glorifying their body. Okay? So I wanted to do this little outline showing we're going to get into Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and we're going to go through and I'm going to show places where Paul questions their salvation, Paul says, hey, the way you're living and what you're doing is what the lost world does. Why are you acting like the lost world, basically, is what he's saying. You're not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. 
You're supposed to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What has become new? You're no longer connected to your body. All things have become new. Why has all things become new? We just mentioned it. When you're lost, it's all about glorifying the flesh. It's 100% about the flesh. When the Bible says that you're not supposed to walk in the flesh, and the Bible says you're not supposed to be in the flesh, I remember uh, watching the body, soul, and spirit of Peter Ruckman, and one of the things he said in there was, uh, the Bible, Paul says you're not supposed to be in the flesh. Then later on he says you're in the flesh. You can't be a Christian and be in the flesh, but later on he says you're in the flesh. Now how do you deal with that? I'll tell you how you deal with that. I'm actually going to tell you how you deal with that. This right here is what Paul's talking about in the flesh. You cannot be in the flesh and be a Christian. That connection between soul and body, you cannot be connected to your flesh. You cannot be in the flesh and be saved. Then later on when he's talking about being in the flesh after salvation, the soul is still in the body. You still have to deal with this body of flesh. Okay? You still get tired. You still get thirsty. You still get hungry. You still get tempted by the lost world, which is all we're talking about what's going on in 1st and 2nd Corinthians. You get tempted by your flesh and by the temptations of the world. The world's way is sin. God has called you out from the world. Okay? You are in the world, but you're not of the world. You're not of the world. You don't have that connection anymore. You're in Christ Jesus. So the twofold thing that's going on that I mentioned before in 1st and 2nd Corinthians is this. You have false prophets coming in, you know, teaching this trinity. I believe it was a trinity they were teaching. Okay? Might not have, they didn't use the word trinity, but they're preaching a false god. Okay? Three separate persons, whatever. They're preaching something that's false. A false Jesus Christ. They're coming in there and they're trying to prevent people from getting saved. They're trying to... Satan is using his ministers of righteousness in 1st and 2nd Corinthians and some of the other books too, but we're focusing on 1st and 2nd Corinthians because remember, Romans and 1st and 2nd Corinthians, as far as the Pauline epistles, are the only time the word carnal is used. It's used in Hebrews, and it's used in the Old Testament a couple times. Okay? Both times the Old Testament and Hebrews is talking about carnal ordinances. Stuff they had to do because they were carnal. Their soul was connected to their body in the Old Testament. And Hebrews is saying this is how it used to be, but this is how, it's, this is how it is now. That's all Hebrews is talking about. It's addressing the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? You can't do this. Um, so they come in and they're trying to create false converts. The second thing they're trying to do is they're trying to mess Christians up. The example that we just talked about it. There's people that believe this up here, the Godhead, but they're spoiled through philosophy. So they're coming in and those that they can't keep from getting saved are those that were already saved when they started coming in. Because remember, Paul came first and these are letters that are being written after Paul already came there, preached the gospel, preached the life of a Christian to them and how they're supposed to live, and we'll get into that in First and Second Corinthians. He said, "This is basically saying, this isn't what I taught you. This isn't what you're supposed to be doing. It's like you forgot everything." Well, come to find out, there was a lot of false converts coming in there. Okay, they were messing Christians up. You cannot glorify your body, be connected to your body. Your soul cannot be connected to your body and be a Christian. You cannot be carnally minded and walk after the flesh. You struggle with the flesh. When you get saved, you war with the flesh. You're spiritually minded, walking after the spirit, and there's a war. i go ahead and raise it again, because these connections are important. There is a war between your body and your mind. And your spirit. Your spirit is now alive. It is not dead. You're not spiritually dead, you're spiritually alive because you have the Holy Spirit in you. And you war with the body. And the whole point of all these people trying to say, you can be a carnal Christian, you can be a carnal Christian, is they're trying to justify glorifying the flesh. Oh, there doesn't have to be a changed life. No, there doesn't have to be a changed life. 
Why? Because they're glorifying the flesh. They have an antichrist spirit that we talked about. They're trying to prevent people from getting saved. The hardest thing to deal with is somebody who's been deceived into worshiping a false Jesus Christ. Over half the world believes in a Jesus Christ, and that was 10 years ago. The numbers are probably a lot higher today. Over half the world believes in a Jesus Christ. All these false religions believe in a Jesus Christ. I mean, they're hard to deal with, and that's the whole point of false converts. If we can get, if they, the servants of Satan can get them over here, it's hard for us to get them over here. It's harder for us to get them over here. Sometimes it feels next to impossible, but I've seen people come from over here to over here. It's possible. Drop the Trinity. Stop glorifying your flesh. Stop trying to justify sin and start struggling with sin. Get saved so God can overcome sin in your life and you'll have a struggle and a fight with the sin that God overcomes in your life. God cleaned my life up. I had no power to do it. I couldn't do it on my own. If I could do it on my own, why did I get saved? It comes down to that. If you could clean your life up on your own, and it was no big deal the way you were living your life to begin with, why did you get saved? If there was nothing wrong with this connection here, and you glorifying your flesh. So hopefully this has helped. We will get into the study in the next, uh, probably be next week. Uh, I bought a lot of bricks. <laughs> Got them on, they, were, they weren't that expensive. God's blessed me. Um, so I've been hauling bricks, and I'm trying to get the backyard done before the rain gets here. So we're going to get into these studies, so if things kind of slow down a little bit in between studies, just know that I do love, my whole theory, or my whole belief is, is if God puts something on your heart to do a study, you need to do it ASAP and get it out. Why? Because there might not be tomorrow. Okay, God could call us home right now as I'm doing this video, catching away the body of Christ. Okay? So... You want those rewards, you're running that race. We need to have the attitude of God puts it on your heart to do something, brothers and sisters of Christ. Get out there and do it ASAP. Well, I haven't I need to I haven't done gospel tracks in a while, and God puts it on your heart, and I haven't done gospel. Get out there and start placing gospel tracks everywhere. God will give you courage to start handing you gospel tracks. I've been trying to hand out, sometimes people don't want it. I've given it to people who they throw it away right away. I had put one out, like left it out, and the guy, and I pretended like it wasn't me because I don't want them telling me, not that I'm ashamed of the gospel, I don't want them telling me I can't do it. So if they find out it's me, then I can't do it anymore. If that happens, it happens. But I'm not trying to. So I, I dropped a gospel track off in the, in the wash part of the bathroom, and I saw a guy walk up there because I went and used the restroom. The guy comes walking up there, he looks at it and just tosses it in the trash. Just like that. So I know there's people out there that don't want to read it. But you know what I'm saying? If God's calling you to do something, today's the day to do it. Okay, don't put it off. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. See you in the next video.